Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of The End Draft. This is episode eight. Thank you for joining us. We got a very special episode uh, filled for you guys. Uh, we have three Twitch affiliate streamers here on the episode today. You guys know Cameron, obviously. The Undrafted Live. Uh, you can go to Twitch and check that out. He's streaming it's gonna be every right week. Here. It's going to be right, right here at the bottom. Usually Saturday through Tuesday from uh, 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. Central Time. Uh, we also have Rare Bear Plays here. Uh, A.K.A. Jacob, the long-awaited Jacob guest. Yes, long-awaited to have him on the pod. Um, he's also streaming. You can check him out on Twitch. And our biggest guest here right now is Mr. Quest himself. I'll let Cameron take over the introductions yeah, this is on that. Quest ALTV. He is a guest on our podcast through a dare that he has on his on his stream. You got channel points, you know, and it's a channel point redemption where you can do a truth or dare. And he leaves it up to the person who uses it to choose whether it's a truth or dare. And I dared him to be a guest on the podcast. So here he is, Quest. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, here, here he is, um, a man of his word. Uh fulfilling the dare that you dared me to do. Uh, I'm Quest LTV. I am a variety streamer on Twitch and uh, have been going for about uh, six months now. Uh, making friends and sewing the community together as best I can. I'm a big dumb animal, folks, uh, but I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. If you also notice his mohawk is red. That is also from a dare. Not my dare, but someone else's dare. <laughs> So that's true. Lots of lots of fun stuff on his stream. That's true. I pretty much do whatever the viewers tell me to do. <laughs> and then uh, to my left, we got Jacob Rare Bear Plays, who hasn't streamed in a while. He made affiliate and dipped out. <laughs> <laughs> so but uh, maybe maybe soon, maybe soon he'll uh, be streaming again. He's just been busy. But yeah, uh, Jacob, maybe. Jacob's been on the pod before. The The episode was trashed. <laughs> but here he is. Jacob, go ahead and introduce yourself, huh? Hey, guys. I'm Jacob. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Good, good. Yeah, we got some burning hot topics, right? Hot. I can say that? Yeah, you can say okay. that. Burning hot topics for you guys. We're going to go and start, start them out with some questions that usually uh, probably you guys get, if not often then this will be the first time you guys are getting these questions um if you had to swap lives with one of your game characters for a week who would it be and why oh, no. uh you know what let's let quest go first oh my goodness if i had to swap lives um well, i mean i guess you know the the answer to the question um is is partially like how many times do you want to die? So do you want to play a game where you <laughs> have never died or maybe at least have a way to come back? Um, I sure enjoy uh, Ark Survival uh, Ascended uh, and, and Ark Survival Evolved before that. And if you die, you come back as a clone of yourself and you just get to continue your life. Uh <laughs> I mean, you, you you know, you land naked, but then you go pick up your bag, put your clothes back on and start, you know, where you left off. So so maybe Ark, because I could just always come back as a clone of myself living forever. That's nice. I would definitely not want to be GTA character, my GTA character. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, GTA or Call of Duty, either one. Get killed all the time. Yeah, constantly. That's the name of the game. What about you, Cam? Uh, right, or Cameron, what was that meat grinder game that you were meat playing grinder. where... Like, Whoa. like time to live was approximately like seventeen door seconds. Step, maybe harsh doorstop. Doorstop. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. 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 That's yeah, right. That harsh one, that harsh one, doorstop. That one is tough because <laughs> the thing is, you you don't want to you don't want to live in that one because it's supposed to be realistic. You don't know where the gunfire is coming from. You don't know if you killed your enemy. And so <laughs> just like real yeah. life. Yeah, just like real life. So. That one wouldn't be very fun to live in. I, I might as well just, you know, go to war if I'm going <laughs> to play that. For you can live it yeah, in right. real time. But my whole thing is if I'm swapping lives with a game character, I want to swap lives with a game character who knows how to get stuff done. That way, while they're living my life, they end up doing a lot better than I'm doing. Oh, I mean? okay. Yeah, I yeah. hear you. I hear you. And uh, so that'd be a tough one because, you know, most games we play are, you know, you, you – 
you have a customized character. They're rough. You yeah. know, so, man, you know, if I could swap with, like... Your GTA character? No. You come back and you have a forehead tattoo of an AK-47? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, someone like Mario, who's a plumber, could, like, you know, do be a handyman around here. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. So, uh, you know, that's that is a tough question, but um, man, I just got to think of of someone. Like I said, someone who can get stuff done around here, but also I'll have fun being in that world. Yeah, you know. Um, like I said, your GTA character probably. <laughs> I don't know if I want to be. He makes that. money, man. He makes a lot of money. Yeah, but do, Uncon- you have, do I get to bring that money ways. back? Do I get to bring that money? He back? might be able to make you money out here while you're while True. you're. True. Yeah, doing crimes and stuff. Sure. <laughs> Illegitimate biker gang. Yeah. Yeah. So was the question? Was the question bringing that character into this world? And then well, we had he to did live say in... swap lives, so that's the first thing I thought of. Was is the game character going to be living oh, as okay. me for that week? Ah, oh, shit! Here we go again. Uh, he wakes well, up in if your I bed. had to do that, I, I think I would play my. Um, well, I would swap lives with my uh, player from V Rising. Now I don't know how well uh, QTV would do in the vampire world. But I imagine the vampire from V Rising would do really well in this world, as long as I can stay out of the daylight. True, man. You know, being uh, able to change into a wolf or a bear or you know all those things, turn into gaseous form and uh, fly around. Oh man, I could really get some stuff done. Sure, <laughs> but you know, I'd have to go with some kind of survival game too, because I know that character can like. You know, it has a lot of experience with building, and there's a, just a lot of projects around this house uh, that I need to get done. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, I'd probably have to go with either Ark or, like, Valheim or something. Because I think I would still have fun in that in that world. Cool. What about, what about you, Jacob? Have you, ever, have you guys ever heard of the game um, Shower With Your Dad Simulator 2015? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, the first, that was the first game I had on Steam because Jacob gifted it to me. It's a real game. It's a real game where you're a <laughs> oh, little yeah, pixelated kid, and there's this huge shower, and there's different dads, and oh. you got to find your dad. Talk about <laughs> sliding into that game. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I got to tell you, Cameron, that that almost stopped me from meeting you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! No, God. but really, I, um, I, I saw that on your channel, and I was just like, I don't know if this guy and 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 I are going to be friends. <laughs> Oh, you saw that game on my, <laughs> on my Steam? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. What talking about? Just know I did and not I was purchase like, oh that my myself. God, what kind of con- I- <laughs> this is supposed to be 18 plus content, not like 21 plus content. <laughs> I don't know what is going it's, on on this, this channel. This is rated uh, content here. No, but my real real answer would probably be um, Shrek from any of the Shrek games. Oh, yeah. There 100%. we go. How do you think he would do out here in the real world? <laughs> Nowadays in 2024, probably pretty well. Yeah, pretty yeah. well. Just he imagine. Just fine. <laughs> How many people would see, like, pay to see the real Shrek? He starts he, making he, content he, he, on your on your uh, on your Twitch page <laughs> while you're gone. Shrek plays. <laughs> <laughs> All right, second question. Wait, you didn't answer. Oh, I'm not. A, well, you're not a streamer, but you let me answer the yeah. question. Uh, the only games I play, hmm, I think I would trade lives with my like PGA Tour character. Oh, just okay. That way you could be a pro golfer for a week. Yeah, for a week. Perpetual golf, golf all day, every day. Yeah, that's what PGA stands for. Perpetual golf all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Um, hey, who were you playing um, GTA with the other day? Your uh, your assistant who kept calling you boss was that? Oh, was that yeah, that's that's <laughs> one you're talking. Yeah, to that's me. <laughs> boss yeah he uses, boss. uses like a little hey boss yeah a little boston accent come on boss please stop running me over with your car <laughs> <laughs> what's the weirdest uh, yeah. dm you've ever received on either on twitch on on comments or anything like that from a either a fan or a watcher the weirdest okay i have one uh, it was in the chat hey this is some troll but he he asked me like he was he was chatting a little bit and he goes he goes does it grip <laughs> oh, and I, no, said, Jesus I was like Christ. I was maybe like, i was like what you mean brother i was like does what grip <laughs> and uh well he was let's just say he was he was talking about my uh my butt 
<laughs> Did he clarify that? <laughs> yeah, he clarified it. Very detailed and, and uh, enough for me to ban him. So. <laughs> you didn't answer the question. <laughs> I, I And I didn't answer the question to him either. So, hey. Well, that's good. <laughs> I'm glad he didn't answer that. <laughs> um, What about you, Jacob? No one DMs me. Well, you had quite a bit of chatters for a while. Anything stand out? No, I don't have it. No, nothing crazy. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you run of the meal every day. That's cool. Hey, follow me. I think I remember at one point you had a... It's uh, bots. Yeah, well, it wasn't really a bot. It was somebody trying to sell you, like, graphic design or something. Yeah, I remember I mean, that. Like, and she was persistent. She was in there just, like, chatting it up. Making it seem legitimate at first. I think somebody was trying to sell Mason a printer before, <laughs> like a printer, like a one you would put like put paper into and print stuff. You know? Oh yeah, I know a printer. <laughs> you know what that is, right? <laughs> what about you, Quest? Well, you know anything? what? That's tough because you. I'm sorry. You you want to be kind to your viewers, and especially, I love making new friends. So I so I want that. I want every opportunity to make that person you know, to have a friendship with that person. Right. Uh, and some of them that are a little bit more sneaky, they come in and they're like, uh, you know, Hey, how long have you been playing this game? And I, I don't know, the questions are kind of, they're kind of all the same, you know, as far as that goes. So I kind of sniffed her up early, so to speak, um, because of the questions that she was asking. And then she got around to, Hey, do you like art? Would you like to see my art? And I said, look, if this is, if this is going down the road where you try and sell me art, then, you know, we're not going to do that because I do all my own art for my own channel. And uh, and and all I have time for here is, you know, making friends and playing games. I don't have time to discuss your art on my channel. Right. So that happened to me. But it's like tough almost because every you don't want to have somebody else who's. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to have somebody else who's interested in art. But they're really just a viewer who's interested in art, and they're not trying to sell you anything. You don't want to alienate them right away because they said the word art, right? So you kind of have to kind of try and walk that line. And I was playing uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 uh, at the time, uh, which is kind of a action, you know, involved sort of game. Uh, so it's tough to balance having that conversation right. with a person who could be, you know, a viewer uh, and play the game and ban people who, you know, troll you, so. Yeah. If you had to delete one game from existence, <laughs> which one would it be and why? Hmm. One game from existence. Like, out of our reality. Out of our reality. Existence. Entirely. Not like we'll forget about it. Ooh. It's just going to be. Not just deleting it off your Steam library. Like, this is from everybody in the world. <laughs> so we'll still remember it. Yeah, you'll still remember it. Because I was thinking, it. what if I just, like. Do that to a really popular game, and then I come up with that concept oh. and make a lot of money. But like I said, we'll still remember it. <laughs> we'll still remember it, so never mind. Well, could they just make it again? <laughs> uh, I don't know. The, the question doesn't go that far. <laughs> oh, okay. These aren't stuff you came up with. So let's just say they cannot recreate it then. Okay. Uh, yeah, they can recreate it. Well, they might not want to recreate it. Like... Uh I was going to say, if you delete it from existence altogether and no one ever knew it existed, you know, would I delete The Witcher 1, which is an absolutely terrible game, <laughs> The Witcher 1. However, if I was to delete it from existence and it would cause The Witcher 3 to not be created, then I would not do that. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> right? that'll mess but up the timeline. But if I could just get yeah. rid of, you know, if, if you never had Witcher 1, then you wouldn't have Witcher 2, which was also not a great game, but better than Witcher 1. And Witcher 3, which is absolutely, to me, maybe one of the best games ever created. The Witcher wow. 3. The, the, the Wild Hunt. It's high praise. Um, but Witcher 1 was absolutely terrible and nearly unplayable. And that and that's the first one that came to my mind. you got to think about fan bases here. You know, like uh, really toxic fan bases. You're going with Call of Duty, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> yeah. The like thing the is, Call I have of such Duty a love franchise, hate. or like just a specific. I have Call a love Duty. hate relationship with that game, but it's got to be like Call of Duty or Fortnite, <laughs> even though that's one of the only. I was going to say Fortnite, bro. Really? 
Fortnite for Jim. Get rid of yeah. Fortnite bucks or V bucks, whatever it's well, called. Well, here's the thing: you got Fortnite, and then when they re- release like skins and stuff, like a, a good example was somebody had posted a picture of a stormtrooper from Star Wars, and all these people were in there like, "Oh, hey, that's from Fortnite," you know. So yeah. you got like all these. All these kids thinking that Fortnite is the one that came up with all these songs and dances and stuff. Dude, Fortnite used to be so good until it became ADHD. That's just my opinion. <laughs> what do you mean, it, ADHD? Like, they, there's so much. You think of it. Think of some show or oh, yeah. anything. They even have a Breaking Bad map yeah. on, on Fortnite now. Like, they have everything I would play you that. Could, like, think of, you know? But it's the same concept. It's the same characters. It's the same... Everything and it's just like um, I think they're just catering to like today's generation of not being able to play a single twelve year olds. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but you know, I remember a couple years ago seeing a. I thought it was just you know a, a meme. I didn't think it was real, but this guy posted this thing and it says, "My dad works for Epic Games and he just sent me this," and it was a picture of Peter Griffin as a playable character in Fortnite. Yeah, and it was. That's something so hilarious. They were like, yeah, this is just a meme, right? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't. What happened last year? Yeah. You could play as Peter Griffin in Fortnite. Yeah. So, yeah. They They have the Simpsons now. They're coming out with that. The Simpsons, you can play as the Fallout characters now. Yeah. But it would have, yeah, I don't know. It's one of those toxic fan bases. But In in World of Warcraft, they had uh, an April Fool's Day. Uh, where they announced that you were going to be able to play as a panda. Uh, but that was long before Mists of Pandaria. And it, it was just an April Fool's joke, and everybody thought it was completely absurd that you would be able to play as this <laughs> anthropomorphic panda. But then later on, you Blizzard re- released Mists of Pandaria because, because the meme was so popular uh, that they went ahead and made models for you to play as these Kung Fu Pandas, basically. Hell and, yeah, uh, I'll do in, it. In, in <laughs> it sounds so familiar. <laughs> I, I'd do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I guess what what would be... Um, for somebody that's just starting out uh, streaming uh, Quest, what would you recommend be the starter setup uh, for someone that's barely starting out? Are we talking about the technology setup or... Uh, yeah, the technology setup, or I guess the equipment setup too. Oh, okay. You know what? It doesn't take much. Um, I have multiple cameras, and I'm only using one right now because uh, the Logitech uh, Pro Stream camera. Um, it's a high definition camera that also has um, a high definition microphone built into it, uh, and I have. And I have multi. I have a, a mechanical mixer, and then I have multiple software mixers as well, and a stream deck, and then I have a a, a standard setup. But if if someone's going to start streaming, I think you should have a webcam. I know some people like the VTuber thing, and some people like just to have a microphone and the and the game. Uh, but a lot of more professional streamers that I've seen. Uh, only trust to raid to someone if they have a camera. Uh-huh. They, they just basically say, no, you know, no camera. I'm not going to raid to that person, you know, and your mileage may vary, but I would say have a camera, but it doesn't take much. Uh, I think that my camera was, I think that my camera was around $400, but I think you can get a good camera that you can stream with for around maybe $99. Nice. Hundred and hundred and hundred and twenty five dollars, something like that. Yeah. And if it has a microphone built into it, well now you don't even need a microphone. So all you would need is that and your computer. And then as far as software, I recommend uh OBS studio. Uh mm-hmm. but mine is currently inside of Steam <laughs> because you can download OBS Studio inside of Steam. I recommend downloading OBS Studio outside of Steam because then if Steam crashes, your stream doesn't crash. <laughs> because I have crashed, um, I have crashed my Steam, th- therefore also crashing my stream. That's pretty smart. My OBS runs inside of, uh, <laughs> yeah. So get get OBS outside of it. But there are other broadcast softwares uh, that work as well. Yeah, also. I, I use. Streamlabs, I just like. But, 
but but yeah. OBS I just I've like heard is a lot. Once you've learned better. OBS, it's so much more powerful. It takes a little bit longer to learn, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's maybe not as user friendly, but once you get how it works, it can do so much more than Streamlabs can. Yeah, that's what I've heard, but it is a little bit more complicated. But uh, that's why mostly I stick with with Streamlabs, just because I uh, I've already got like all my transitions and stuff on there. But but yeah, no, if uh, it's one, are you are you looking to start? I mean, if I if I can really bump up the oh my god, this oh, dog. Yeah. <laughs> My dog is in the uh, the studio here. Uh, she uh, is a bit of a bull in a uh, china shop. So. <laughs> um, just make sure she can get out of here without knocking over. Sh- okay, there she <laughs> We're good. Yeah, um, so is this the foreshadowing of Juan becoming a streamer? Is that what's, is that what's happening? Man, if I can be... F- well, right now my PC can't even run Call of Duty, so I I, I need to beef it up just a little well, bit, and then maybe I can, maybe I can, uh, maybe I can start something like that. Well, I got some, I I got some advice for you. Just just make that boss character, just make that boss character <laughs> a uh, a regular character on your stream, and you'll get viewers so fast. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and ask this next question here. Go ahead. Um, What's one game that you pretend to love but secretly can't stand? Oh, that I secretly love that I can't stand? No, no, a game that you pretend to love oh, but wait. secretly can't stand. Hmm. Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> I play it with Mason, that's about <laughs> it. I, I probably will not be getting the newest one. All right, out of Call of Duty and Fortnite, which one's your, your least favorite? <laughs> Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> Here's the thing. I, I enjoy playing it with you. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't know, the stuff in it just kind of makes me cringe. A little yeah. bit. But at least Fortnite knows what it is compared to yeah, Call, Call of Duty. Of, yeah, they Call lean, of Duty is trying to be bro. Fortnite sometimes. Yeah. Call of Duty change, bro. <laughs> and that's the thing. It used to be, Call of Duty used to be so great. And then, now look, at it. it's it, it is nothing. Like like from Modern Warfare 2, you know, back, back in the day, like what was that, 2008? Yeah. You know, compared to now, it's a completely now different. You're running game. around as like Drake. Yeah, now you can play as <laughs> Snoop Dogg and Nicki Minaj and anamorphic cats. So you know, <laughs> yeah. it's just not the same game as it used to be. So I'm gonna have to say Call of Duty. Okay. Okay. I was Drake with an AK, and then one of his emotes is well, like. Well, you know, I don't want to alienate song. any of my uh, viewers uh, by saying this, but I have told them that I will always be honest with them. Um, Watch no it be what. arc. So I'm going to be honest. I I loved Fallout New Vegas when it came out. Oh, no. When it first came out, I played it when it first came out. Um, computers have gone on to newer operating systems and uh, all of the, the... It is not playable. Yeah, that's... Every time I not, try to stream it, it, it crashes. It is not a playable game anymore. It, See, it was playable back then. Now the story, it, if you just played, if you just played on like kill everything easy settings and all that, the story in Fallout New Vegas is absolutely one of the best stories ever told in a video game. Amen, brother. Uh, but I have tried to stream it for some of my viewers recently, and I and I tried so hard, <laughs> and I just can't get it. I just can't get it to work. I can understand. And my viewers, that. there's a couple of them that give me a hard time about it because they're like, uh, you know, they they love Fallout New Vegas, and I loved it when it came out, and I currently hate it and can't stand it. So it's understandable because that that's the thing, and the same with Fallout Three. It's it. I every time I tried to open it up, I don't know what it is. It it crashes on me for it, and it's not. You know, when it came out, it was it was a big game, but it compared to the, the new games, it's you know it's pretty small. So why why is it right. crashing all the time? So I I no, I, I get it. I still love the game though. Well, maybe you know maybe what you ought to do is create a, a Windows ninety five <laughs> virtual machine, and then it will run just fine. I was gonna say maybe my computer's just trash because it runs them just fine. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mine freezes when <laughs> I open up my Word document. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> what about you, Jacob? Well, there you go. If you want to, if you want to join our world, then you can get that uh, virtual uh, GPU and crash your game too. <laughs> there you go. That sounds like fun. <laughs> no, I was gonna say I think uh, mm, Fortnite. <laughs> that's the only game I really play with you guys. It's like, I'm like yeah, let's do it. Let's get, <laughs> yeah, let's get in there. <laughs> I think Jacob was more interested in the fan made games that are on there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I like the haunted house I, game, game modes. Oh yeah, there was no. that. But you know, Fortnite. I feel like it's trying to be Roblox with all that because yeah, Roblox the has model. The, yeah. It's the same thing that Roblox yeah. does. The exact same thing. That's literally like my brothers, they play Roblox, or they used to play Roblox a lot, and they said, oh, Fortnite is just like Roblox now. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's what, yeah, that's what the kids want. It's where the money's at. Yeah. Just announced today, Roblox collaborating with Fortnite to bring out new characters for all the players. Oh, oh is it really? Big. There you go. There you go. Which fellow streamer would you trust to take <laughs> over your channel for a day? Fellow streamer I would I would trust? I mean, I don't know. I I feel like I feel like Makes all the fellows. One of them right there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I feel like any of them would probably be just fine. I don't not trust any of them. Nice. What about you, Jakey Poo? Um, can you repeat the question? <laughs> Which fellow streamer would you trust to take over your channel for a day? Quest probably and Cameron. That's because we're here. They're the only ones I know. <laughs> <laughs> or that one guy you stream with. Oh, yeah, that Daft Punk yeah, Panda could probably Panda, here, yeah. But... Quest would get me. He would double my viewership in is... a day. <laughs> <laughs> it is an interesting question, though, because like if, if the question is, you know, who would you give all of your passwords to so oh, that they could run true. your stream for a day, you know, w- while you were away or something like that? It is. Um, it becomes a really hard easy question to trust somebody virtually, right, and and not give them any of that responsibility. But it is tough for me to meet somebody, uh, you know, like you, Jacob, or you, Cam, or or you want, and then say, "Here's my password," you know, for my for my OBS <laughs> and all that. Have for you sure, heard? Juan has my Twitch like password because <laughs> he's the one that puts all my stuff up, like. The graphics and all that. Yeah, I make all the graphics. So, guys, if you had to give your, if you had to give your passwords for your, you know, frosty tools and all that kind of stuff, like, would the answer still be you trust me? I think I trust you, but I probably wouldn't stream again until I looked and saw what you've done to him. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking devilish with that yeah, red, that red yeah, ball. <laughs> yeah. He's like a devilish. Got the, got the blue flames in the background. Yeah, because I've got that grin sometimes that makes you think I've been up to no good. Uh, yeah, Questby looking like he rules over hell right now. He's like, in the <laughs> era right now. <laughs> what's the most What's the most embarrassing thing you've done on stream that you hoped no one noticed? Oh man, I'll tell you right now. I threw up on stream. What? <laughs> I was. This I was, happened. I was. It was a while back. I never told y'all. Uh, <laughs> I only had like maybe five or six viewers and really the only chatter was that Daft Punk Panda and he come into my stream. He oh. said something. I said, I'll drink to that. I was already drunk. I took a shot of fireball and I threw up in my trash can oh, clipped that. and God. he was just like, you good brother, <laughs> <laughs> bro. You should have clipped. That would have been oh, awesome. Hell no. That was, it was a long time ago. The VOD ain't even up anymore. So, oh geez, that's funny. What about you quest? I, I was actually thinking about this question earlier because uh, Cam and I uh, talked a little bit about, you know, craziest thing that's happened on your stream or funniest thing that's happened on your stream. And I thought, um, I don't know, my stream has been pretty uh, mild, uh, you know, with some with some sort of innuendo uh, aside, uh, as you know, some funny things have happened with some uh, some castroides. Um, in the arc game. Oh, because, I know where this is going. Know, that's a uh, beaver. <laughs> yeah, because that's a beaver. Um, a castroides is a beaver species in arc survival. Yes, so those who don't um, know, an arc, it's like 
you tame prehistoric animals in there, and there's these giant beavers, and they're different colors. So just so you know, there's some context. Yeah, to and it. so for and so for Pride Month, uh, the developer of Ark uh, released all of these different colors, all of these different Pride colors for these <laughs> dinosaurs. Uh, and they do this on holiday pretty regularly, release new colors so that you'll go out and tame these dinosaurs if you want to, you know, have their colors or whatever. But the beaver that I, t- the Castroides that I tamed was uh, a pink Castroides. Uh, and so you can start to put together the innuendos here, no, especially okay. since the Castroides <laughs> is good for giving you wood. Nice. Oh, nice. So, <laughs> at any rate... So yeah, I'll just go ahead. So and I say, said, yeah, yeah. This, I said this big pink beaver gives me wood, <laughs> um, but 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 they do in the game. Like if you want to, you know, if you want to harvest wood for you know building things. But um, I was surprised when uh, I had a spicy burrito and I was just so hungry. It was uh, it was during one of my twenty four hour streams, and I said I'm going to shut my camera off because this is something I had sort of learned from my. Uh, my partner leader, Hey TK, um, because he always shuts his camera off when he eats. And I said, I'm going to shut my camera off so that you guys don't have to watch me eating. And the viewers just came out with, no, no, leave your camera on. We want to watch you eat. <laughs> oh, God. And I was just like, are you crazy? And All then right. even more viewers said, no, we want to watch you eat that spicy burrito. We want to watch you eat stream. that spicy burrito and take off your socks, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and... And I ate that spicy burrito and my nose started to run. It was so spicy. And like, I, I started to get like red in the face and my nose was running and I had to uh, like wipe my nose with my uh, handkerchief and all of that. And the viewers just loved it. They just loved it. So from Lots that point on, that. I told him, I said, you know, I apologize if you don't want to see me eat on stream, but evidently you guys love this. So I've eaten spaghetti on stream. And I've eaten spicy burritos on stream, and uh, it's a little bit embarrassing to have my nose run and have to like wipe my nose and whatever <laughs> because of the runny nose that I get from the spicy burrito. But it was fun, and they loved it. So, whatever. So you'll be finding the little nicks and in, in the content here, uh, in the little corners of of Twitch. Uh, sometimes you could do something random, and all of a sudden, all these viewers come out of nowhere because they really like it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Especially true, showing true. feet. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> what about what about Jacob? Yeah, what about Jacob here? Oh, I don't have any uh, embarrassing moments. Sorry, guys. Well, yeah, so thank a one. I remember, I, will that, say. I remember that one time I was watching your stream and it looked like you just got out of the shower. Yeah, and you had your hair and it was like in a point right here. You look really emo. Is that not something that's embarrassing to you? Now that you say it, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just gonna say it's not really embarrassing, but it's when um, you know, Cameron's playing. And someone does the pickle suit, and you have to get up, and you got... Bro, is that embarrassing? <laughs> no, I always wanted to ask you that. You got it's like not little, embarrassing. I, I swear they're like cookie monster pajamas or something. I don't know what <laughs> yeah. the, And he's like walking back to his closet, but he's like in the game world. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you know that, but like whenever you get up to go change... You are not, you're not like excluded. Like we can see you putting it on. And, and you're like in the world. So it's like in Valheim or something yeah. you're like in the wilderness going through like a field to get your pickle suit on. I, I've noticed that. I remember because t- I was walking back to my chair. I was playing Valheim and Jake was like, bro, it looks like you're in the game. <laughs> like it looks like you're in your living room on, on Valheim. Like got the fireplace. That's behind funny. You. you know, you know, one time when Cam put on his pickle suit, he was wearing, uh, you know, just to be funny, I, you know, I'm going to say booty shorts, uh, <laughs> but it looked like he was, but it looked like he was just wearing uh, like boxer briefs. Like these shorts were so I probably short. was. And then the viewer, dude, are you in your underwear? And he said, no, these are short. But it looked like when he got up to go get the pickle suit, it looked like he got up. And, you know, fully dressed streamer from the waist up. And then as he was walking up, it looked like he was in his underwear and socks. Yeah, I wear really high socks, too. <laughs> that's respectable. That Dude, that's... I remember watching him one time, and, and he got up, and I think he's... Uh, he had shorts on, but I guess, like, every once in a while, when you say they ride up for an hour, they ride up a little bit. And he got up to put on that pickle suit, and that was the same instance. <laughs> I love it. Love it. It's good content. Let's see when I wear like pajama pants, 
People are like, oh, how could you sit there and be comfortable wearing pants? I'm like, oh. What so, do you I, mean? I, I, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, that's why I'm like, what do you mean? Like, when I wear sh- when I wear my basketball shorts, people think I'm in my underwear. So. <laughs> <laughs> These are my basketball shorts. They look like really <laughs> they cropped up. up. They're like cropped at the crotch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they, say, like, spicy on the butt. I turn around and the cheek, there's no cheeks. <laughs> <All right. for> the- <laughs> So, Quested asked if there's any cryptid stories in the area that we live, and... You're so good at telling stories. I'll, I'll tell one. So, my grandpa had one. Uh, years ago, my, you know, RIP, my grandpa, but uh, my grandpa used to go hunting back in the day, back in the 60s and 70s. Everything okay? Yeah. You're like pointing up at the thing? Oh, gotcha. Oh. Okay. He's just giving a, a, a kiss. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Yeah. My, my grandpa back like in the 60s, 70s, used to go uh, hunting for raccoons. And uh, he used to go to this little town called Peel Town. And he used to tell this story about when he'd be out there at night. There's this old bridge, probably been there for 100 years or so it, by the time he even like would go hunting out there. And uh, they'd have to cross this bridge to get to where they were. And at night, he would say that there's uh, a ghost light. Y'all know what a ghost light is, right? No, no, I don't know what that is. Yep. Like a like a sphere or something. Yeah, you know, ghost. it's just a floating orb or so. You know, and um, he would say that the the ghost light would be there if you if you go over over the bridge, and people would think that somebody was out there with like you know with a lantern or something, and when you call out to it, it would just keep going. But if you get closer to it, it would disappear. And uh, I remember that like him telling me that when I was when I was a little when I was a little kid. And uh, I'd always ask my my mom and dad if we could go there because I, I was so intrigued by it. But uh, there's no speculation of what the ghost light could be. But, you know, some say that it is somebody who was carrying a lantern, you know, long time ago and was killed. And uh, there used to be train tracks there and a train used to run through. So it could have been a conductor, could have been uh, somebody else who was hunting. But that was uh, one of the earliest memories I have of hearing about a cryptid, which I didn't, you know, at the time I'd never even heard the word cryptid, but I knew about ghosts. And, uh, yeah, that was a real early memory of, of that. If I ever saw a cryptid, bro. What what would you do? Man, I'll probably shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably my first reaction. <laughs> if I ever saw a cryptid, you better cross the street. <laughs> <laughs> but no that was the that's the peel town ghost light um i never really googled it you know but i'm sure i'm sure you know if you look it up you might hear some stories about it you or can s- make its own wikipedia I, I could create the wikipedia for it where did the texas chainsaw massacre happen i grew up hearing that it was right down the street from where we lived <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if it really was or not it, yeah, could it could have been. Because be. <laughs> uh, it's based on a true story, right? Yeah, yeah. it's definitely a true story. Ed, said, oh, Ed Gein, I think that's his name. Well, I heard that the original story wasn't even in Texas. Mm. Mm. So I don't know. I, I, I heard that the house that it happened at was in another state. And then for some reason, whoever, you know, the people that made the movie thought it would be a good idea to put it in Texas. Man. Everything's better in Texas. Everything is better in Texas. Yeah, even killing. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> especially their chainsaws. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean you know there's uh there, there's a lot of uh, different stories out of Texas. What well, there's this one? I think it was um, Granger, Texas is the uh, is where the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, really? So it wasn't Texas. Yeah. Let me see. Granger, uh, Texas. That is where the Texas Chainsaw Massacre happened, and it's uh, very accurate to the movies. Or the movies were very accurate. Round right? Rock. Uh, Round Rock's Quick Hill. That's uh, near Austin. Mm-hmm. Round Rock, Texas. So definitely not down the street. <laughs> two hours, two and a half hours from here. Okay, okay. Quest, you got any, uh, what was it called, cryptics? Cryptids? Yeah. Cryptoids. Yeah, you know, actually, when I was, uh, when I was younger, we used to go uh, hunting rocks uh, in the mountains of, uh, Colorado, uh, you, cause you could go to, um, you could go to ghost towns. So these are, you know, towns from the turn of the century that were abandoned. Uh, and you could search those towns for, uh, garbage, um, for, for, for garbage, uh, burial. 
because they used to bury these, uh, like they used to throw out their glass had lead in it. And so over time, these old bottles would uh, change color after they were buried in the earth, Whoa. taking on the colors of the minerals, you know, that, that, that it was buried in. So you could get colored glass bottles. And if you found an intact colored glass bottle, you could, um, you could sell it for quite a bit. But anyway, we would go uh, hunting um, semi, semi-precious stones and uh, metals uh, in the mouths of these abandoned mines sometimes in Colorado. Uh, and you just had to be really careful because if there was a mine shaft that was, you know, partially covered by rotting timber and stuff like that, if you stepped on it, well, then you could fall hundreds of feet. Um, so you had to just be really careful. We went in one of the mines, my father and I, and uh, <clears throat> and we went in as far as the light would take us. Uh, you know, just looking for maybe uh, rocks and stuff that they had left behind, uh, just kind of hitting them with our with our rock tools and stuff like that, or hammer and pick and that kind of stuff. And uh, and then we heard we heard kind of a um, a knocking. Like imagine if uh, imagine if someone had taken something um, really really heavy and sort of hit it against the rock wall in like another part of the mine. Um, I don't know, maybe, you know, like the sound from Jurassic Park, like when a uh, when a T-Rex takes a step, right? Like yeah. boom, mm -hmm. and then it kind of shakes the, uh, shakes the cavern a little bit. Uh, but it sounded like somebody was pounding on the wall down in the cavern somewhere. And we oh, thought that, that no. was just totally yeah. weird. You know, oh, my dad, hell no. yeah, my dad said, we we got to get out of here because <laughs> yeah <laughs> if it's an animal you know he said if it's an animal we got to get out of here because this is where it's living and it's not going to take too kindly to people who don't take too kindly right so um but if if it's a person or something then they may be you know think that we're claim jumping or you know who knows what whatever it is this sound was no good so we went out and there is a uh, there's a bar um, that is also a restaurant in Idaho Springs, Colorado, called Tommy Knockers. And it just coincidentally is where my dad and I went uh, to just get some food and, you know, uh, get me a soda and, you know, and that type of stuff. And uh, so we were telling the the, uh, the waitress about this, and she said, I'm going to have the manager come talk to you because this is crazy. Manager came and talked to us, and he said, you probably heard a Tommy Knocker. Oh, wow. And we said, mm. you mean like the name of your restaurant? And he said, yeah, yeah. This was named after, this was named after a cryptid called a Tommy Knocker. Now, what they do is they warn miners of danger, and they have in Colorado since about the turn of the century, by by banging on the walls, um, in in the distant caverns. They're warning of an impending collapse. Um, so that's really interesting that you think oh. you heard something like that. Well, my dad thought that he lost one of his rock hammers, and so we had to go back to that same oh, site no. uh, the next <laughs> morning. Perhaps, bro. And and we went back to that. Well, we didn't go inside because when we got there, his hammer was outside, just laying on the ground, oh, wow. um, outside of this entrance. But the entrance to the mine had collapsed. Wow! Oh, hell no! That's insane. Yeah, that's a good story. Wow! It it had collapsed that last night. And, uh, and so I, my father and I, I mean, he's passed now, but, um, I will continue to tell that story for the rest of my life, uh, because that was extremely strange, but wow. it's evidently called a Tommy knocker. And that's, uh, and that Tommy knocker may have saved our lives. I don't know. Wow. Jeez. Dang. Yeah, yeah. That is, uh, that is crazy. That's a, that that's is a good, really good story. Yeah. Wow. A Tommy knocker. That sounds doesn't sound like a cryptid, though. A Tommy no way knocker. I'm Googling tonight. <laughs> Tommy knocker. Wow. Well, it originated in the mines in uh, England. Um, and and it, it, it's because these little uh, ghosts or gnomes, they're, they're, they're supposed to be like two feet tall or else kind of in ghost form. And they, and they are said to be the spirits of miners who passed in the mines 
you know, in accidents in the past, but they stick around the mines to warn the living so that they don't also, you know, get caught in a mine collapse or something. So like these, that. these are nice cryptids. Yeah, well, they um, they are also rumored to, like, hide people's tools and uh, put out lights in the mine and oh. do other sorts of, So mischievous, know, but uh, sometimes nice. mischievous sorts of things, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Wow. But anyway, I don't know if that's classified as a cryptid, but no, that's, that's definitely a, like cryptid. a thing that a thing that people don't know if it really exists, but a lot of people say it does. I don't know. <clears throat> when I was a kid, I uh, the street I lived on mm-hmm. is uh, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. But when I was a kid, there was these stories that other kids on the school bus would tell. And it was about, uh, I think they just called him the Axe Man. And apparently if you walked alone on the street, he would come out and he, he'd grab you and he'd take I you back to his take house. take advantage of you. Pretty much. To, he'd chop you no. up. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't was, chop you up. I was about to say. He'd sure grab you. <laughs> That's but, what I was saying. I was like, wow, an Axe Man just yeah, grabbing people? <laughs> he grabbed you and take you to his house and chopped you up. And, uh, and it was this old house. Down one of the str- down one of the streets in my neighborhood, where kids would point and say that's where the Axe Man lives. And you know it was this house. I don't think anyone lived there anymore. But maybe the Axe Man. Here, why, why don't you just take it? <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was this house with you know overgrown, uh, you know, grass and 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 everything all over the house and. Uh, and then I, I even remember like my, my friend's mom telling the story how she escaped from him. Oh, wow. So Jeez. I haven't heard about the story in a long time. Whenever your parents tell you like something yeah. that correlates with the, the story you've heard, something about it just changes. Like Something about it just seems more concrete, and it makes you feel like it's not in your mind. Yeah. Because you know? like, there's a lot of stories when I was a kid, and... Whenever my mom told me that she experienced the same thing, yeah, it's something about it, just something different. So I don't. So I was thinking of, uh, you know, the story goes back quite a bit then. But uh, and and the friend's mom, it was it was Garrett, you know, my my neighbor. Of course, Jared, tell you that story. No, not Jared. Garrett. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Of course, uh, get those two confused. <laughs> but um, and then I remember uh, one day the bus was dropping kids off. I was on the bus and. Of course, we pass by that house that people say that he lived all the time. The bus was going by the house, and a BB goes through the bus window, and, or, or it was actually a pellet from a pellet gun. <laughs> it you know cracked the window, didn't hit anybody, but of course everybody freaked out, and uh, so little things like that made me really believe the story. But it turns out that that pellet that that hit the school bus was apparently some dude trying to shoot a squirrel or something. He Possibly didn't mean to shoot the school bus, but uh, but yeah, they, you know that's just one of those things that uh, you know you hear other kids talk about, but then when you hear like Juan was saying, you know, an adult actually tell the story, that's when it starts getting a little, a little too too it's real. Yeah, to a little eight year old kid. Yeah, <laughs> your your bus had all the bad kids on it. I remember that. Yeah, they <laughs> probably not the best influences mm-hmm. on there. Especially if you're a kid, and then an adult tells you that kind of story yeah how do you stay motivated and avoid a burnout when streaming regularly which applies only to uh questing you yeah the undrafted oh you want me to go first i'm sorry rare bear but you ain't, you ain't streaming right now <laughs> <laughs> it's okay but uh oh for for me i mean it is it is kind of hard because like i said sometimes i don't feel like playing a game sometimes i feel like, don't feel like getting on on the on the camera yeah i stuff, feel like but. this turns into like the last question yeah, yeah but Job. you know sometimes i just have to look for a you know maybe a you know what maybe, jacob that's a good point right here what? i think that's probably the best what what makes you what separates this from the hobbies to the jobs Besides, you just like oh that's games. it that this is this is a hobby because i mean i have made i've, I've made a little over 100 bucks doing this over the past couple of months yeah. you know and and, it, and it's not bad but i don't see it as a job at all it's 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 you know just me playing some games 
people coming in. You know, I, I put some pride into it. Yeah, I, for sure. I, I I try to be a little little passionate about it and stuff because it's it's something I, I want it to look professional. I want it to you know I want I, it to look good. Yeah, I feel you hundred percent. And and Juan has helped me with that because he makes he makes some music for it. He's made some. Ember, you're gonna have to stop shaking your collars. <laughs> Doing all kinds of noise over there, um, so you know that's that's just my whole thing. I try to have fun with it, you know, and it and it's it, it's not work at all. It's not supposed to be. Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. And you could drink at this job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can. <laughs> what about you, Quest? Well, there have been a couple of times where <laughs> there have been a couple of times where I'm on stream and my time is up. You know, I'm at the three hour mark or the five hour mark or whatever I scheduled for. And chat is just popping. People love that I'm there. I love that we're together and I just can't stop. And one of my streams actually went, one of my streams actually went for uh, 29 hours. Jeez. Oh my God. Uh, I was oh my off. God. I was, I was off for one hour. So I went for 23 hours. I streamed for 20 three hours I think and then I came back and I streamed for six more so it was 29 hours with an oh hour break oh my gosh wow. and um and the people and the people are like you're just absolutely nuts but I just wanted to stay on like I just I just wanted that vibe I wanted to be there with the people and laughing and and you know making jokes and playing games and being together and um but then the very next day I was scheduled to stream like three hours later for like a five hour shift Whew. and I canceled it. Yeah. Um, I don't so, blame you. <laughs> well, so that's, so that's part of the way that I avoid burnout. I just know my limits and I know when I'm going to break myself if yeah. I keep going. Right. Right. The other way that I avoid burnout is I try not to have moments like that. I try and say, look, I hate to leave you. I hate to leave you, but I'm scheduled to stream again in eight hours and I need food and sleep uh, so that I can be good for you when we see each other again. And it's tough, you know, but and it's tough for me to leave that vibe. But I know if I don't, I won't be healthy long term to keep doing this. Right. So you, you have to know your limits. Mm -hmm. Man, that's probably like probably uh, that's one of the fears that we have when we're trying to make the undrafted uh, gaming channel banners right here. <laughs> um, but, uh, trying to make something like that, um, it's, it's, it's hard to tell, uh, Cameron, um, Hey brother, I need you to go ahead and stream for six hours and then I need you to download the video and then I need you to send it over to our editor and then have him edit it into uh shorts and video form, uh, all the funny moments and the funny moments only. Yeah. And then, and then, yeah. and then we got to post that and then schedule that. It's a whole other channel to take care of. It's a whole other platform to follow guidelines to, um, and that is something that uh, that we find we find difficult right now at the time uh, to do. So I, I I feel like I understand just a little bit of that of that frustration. Yeah, because that's the hard part is the editing. That's, that that's takes that forever. Y'all, you know, y'all yeah. know. That's why we hired one. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to William. <laughs> Uh, we try to hire. We try to hire our editors, man. Because I mean, us editing for hours on end with our schedules. You know how we work night shifts and stuff like that. Um, for the zoo and for the theater. Not me. I work days. Yeah, he works days at the theater. I'm friends. the janitor. <laughs> me and Mason <laughs> are the janitors for the for the theater. Uh, um, and, and and yeah, it gets it gets difficult sometimes. Yeah. So, uh, every support uh, that we get, we we greatly appreciate it. Dragon Leaf, if you're watching, just come back to the streams. It's all, it's all <laughs> come <good>. back, <laughs> come back to the streams. Um, Quest, uh, if you want to say anything to the cameras, to the crew on YouTube, to the, our uh, our people, uh, to outreach, uh, this is the time to say it. I'm just I'm just super grateful that uh, that that Cam wanted me to be here. Um, I don't I don't know a whole lot about your world. You guys make it look so easy. Um, and, uh, you know, come see me on Twitch and, uh, you know, come give me a hard time. For That's what I'm there for. For sure. What's, uh, just remind everybody I'm, what your schedule is and what your, uh, what your link is, uh, how to look you up. Yeah, sure. You can go to, uh, twitch.tv 
forward slash Quest AL TV. And that's Quest A E L T V, like Raphael, but it's Quest AL. <laughs> right. Anyway, and then you can go to like forward slash uh, schedule if you want to. Um, but uh, you can get to my schedule anytime that I'm not on. The tabs that are there are home about schedule videos. You can just check out the different things. I normally stream at 9 a.m. Mountain Time. Uh, mountain time uh, in the United States, uh, Monday through Friday. Uh, and then I also stream Friday night uh, and Sunday morning early. Uh, so, and I stream a variety of things, but right now I'm, I'm loving Ark uh, Survival uh, Ascended. I play a lot of that. Okay. Um, guys, everybody that's on YouTube, uh, check us out on all audio platforms. If you're on all audio platforms right now, Check us out on YouTube where we have this awesome setup uh, and the graciousness of Cameron's house. <laughs> and uh, we have everything set up here uh, for you to enjoy a uh, little eye candy here and there. Uh, if you want to stay for the banners, go ahead. Uh, if you can follow The Undrafted live on Twitch, he's uh, there Saturday through Tuesday from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. Central Time. Uh, stay for the banners. we got Rare Bear Plays here as well. Thank you for your time, Jacob. Thank you, guys. And uh, we'll see you guys next week on The Drafted.